Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to this session on Microsoft Power BI. Uh, I'm going to be your instructor for this session and in today's session we are going to take a look at the various features of Microsoft Power BI. So it's basically going to be an introduction of the tool. So starting with Microsoft Power BI, the first question that comes to the mind is always going to be what is Power BI? So Power BI is nothing but it's a data visualization tool. And there are other um, vendors in the market who are providing the same kind of tools and the leading ones are Tableau and ClickView. Um, but Power BI has its own features which make it especially useful for the data visualization. Now Power BI as a tool has different components. It basically consists of three different components uh, which are going to be the Power BI desktop, the Power BI service, and then they also have the feature for mobile apps, uh, which can be used on Windows, iOS, or other Android devices. Power BI Desktop is the one that we're going to be working with most frequently, and that is a, a developer's tool uh, that allows us to clean data, transform data, and uh, make all these visualizations. Power BI Service is an online uh, software as a service um, offering from the Power BI group. It is basically cloud-based, so it is hosted on the web, so you can just have that link of your dashboard on through a browser, and you can, if you have the licenses, the necessary licenses, you can share it with different people in your organization or different Power BI consumers, which can be your business or which can be your employees. The mobile apps are basically just for making it easier to browse through your dashboard and charts to these all these devices that we have, cell phones, tablets, and so on. So once you've installed the Power BI uh, desktop on your local system and you would double click on it in the search menu to open it, this is your welcome screen. Uh, it would actually give you a free 60 day trial as well of the Power BI Pro, which is a licensed version. So if you want to explore those features as well, you can have a free 60 day trial. Otherwise you would be able to use some limited features of the Power BI service, but they are good uh, as a starter point. But later on you can just uh, sign up for a 60 day free trial as well and explore the more professional features which are included in the licensed version as well. So you can see that on the left hand side, we have different options like we can go to get data, which is going to be a first step. Let's take a look at what we have on the right hand side over here. So you have different uh, links to different blogs and communities and even tutorials. So as I mentioned earlier, there is very good content on the Microsoft official site. Uh, for learning so you can explore these different options as well there's a very uh, vibrant community as well and forums where you people uh, post their queries you can go to those links as well for your reference for now what we are going to do is we are going to start with getting the data because that is going to be our first step connecting to a data source so we just need to click on get data over here and this at the back is our power bi application and once you click on get data, you'll see a pop-up come up and which would be something like this. And it has various data sources as we can see. So there are plenty of data sources of different kinds. They have categorized those data sources as well, or you can just take a look at all of them or you can search uh, using this search field as well. So uh, as we can see over here, we have some file-based data sources, which are your common types of files, Excel, CSV files, text files. You can even connect to XMLs and JSONs, um, PDFs as well. You can connect to a SharePoint folder, and this is a folder, which is a Windows folder. So you can connect it to a folder and it would pick up multiple files from that folder. You can connect to different databases. So all these different kinds of databases, if you scroll down, you'll see that there are various various kinds of databases that you can connect with. Uh, you have the Power Platform, where you can directly connect with the Power BI data sets, data flows, Azure, online services. So different kinds of services, you can uh, connect with Salesforce, Google Analytics, Data World to get the data sets. And then if you go to other, you can see that you can connect to web and different, you can connect to R scripts, Python scripts, or ODBC connectors and so on. So um, the whole idea of going through all these is basically just to see that there is such a 
large range of connectors which are available for the Power BI. So it's obviously uh, possible to connect to different and varied data sources with Power BI. Uh, you can connect to multiple layer sources. So it is not that you just need to connect to an Excel and then you cannot connect to a database source in the same uh, in the same power bi workbook that you're creating uh, for your visualizations you can connect to different data sources and then merge the data or append the data in the different data sources and use it accordingly so for now we are going to start very simply by connecting to an excel file the financial sample let's connect to this first this is the file that is provided with uh, the microsoft um, or on the Microsoft uh, technical website as well. So all those links that I have given you, uh, they have links to and the samples link that I have given you that is linked to this file. So you can just download it. It's a very simple file. So let's just click on this as simple as that and do open. And it will establish a connection and so on. And once it has established the connection, the next step would be this navigator window. This navigator basically would allow you to navigate through the sheet, the data in the sheet. So you can see that there is something called financials, there's something called sheet one. So you can just click on this checkbox and it will generate a data preview. So this is a data preview. That means it is not the complete data set. It is just a sample of some of the records from your data set to give you an idea of what kind of data exists at the at the source. So we can see that these uh, are the column headings in this Excel file, which are segment, country, something, something, something. And this is the kind of data that we have over here. Okay, so this looks pretty neat and clean and we can use it probably for our purpose. Okay, so now uh, at the bottom, you can see that there are different options over here. So the options are load, that is going to load this data to your Power BI desktop application. You have an option to transform the data, in which case you would be allowed to do or perform some transformations on this data. And you can cancel your operation and select a different data source altogether as well. So let's go with load for now. We'll take a look at the transformation, but uh, we'll take a more complex data set uh, for that uh, example because this data is pretty neat and clean. It's arranged properly, doesn't really need a lot of transformations. So we are just going to click on the load button for now and just click on load. Now, once you have clicked on the load button, you can see the there would be different messages which would be coming in this pop-up and you would be able to see what exactly is happening how much of data it has read in terms of kilobytes and megabytes and so on and once it has imported the data to the power bi desktop tool then at the very right you would be able to see that these are this is the particular uh, table that we imported from the excel spreadsheet financials and these are the various columns. So these are the various fields simply which can directly be used and we can create some charts and visualizations over here. But before that, let's understand this uh, window pane that we have got for the Power BI uh, desktop application. So there are various things that you can see on this window and we need to understand what they mean and how they can be used. So if you go, if you go out to the very top, this is your file menu and these different things are known as ribbons or called as ribbons in power bi so we can just refer to them as ribbons so this is the visualizations ribbons fields ribbons get data ribbon and so on all right so now we can see that we're on the home tab and in the home tab we have various options like get data which is similar to what we did uh, using the initial pop-up window or the welcome screen for power bi so you can go and get data from here as well it will give you the same list uh, it is just showing the common data sources. You can click on more and it will give you the same uh, the set of connectors that we saw earlier. So you can connect to the data from here as well. It has also displayed some common uh, data sources at the very top. So Excel, Power BI datasets, SQL Server, because SQL Server is Microsoft. So they have displayed all these common data sources here as well. So you can just simply with one click of the button, you can just go and fetch data from these data sources. There's also an option to enter the data manually, which we'll explore later. And then it gives you a list of recent sources. Um, so that is one part. This is your data pane. 
and basically deals with getting the data that is connecting with the data source. Then you have another pane called the queries. And the queries, you can see that you have an option to transform the data and you have the option to refresh the data. So if something changes, you want to refresh the data, then uh, you can get the latest data and refresh all the visuals that we have created in this report. Okay, these are simply new visuals, which you can also see over here. So you can just insert some text boxes for formatting and visual purposes here. Uh, new measures, quick measures are basically related to these fields. So you can create your own measures, uh, do some simple uh, calculations and so on. Publish is to publish it to the Power BI service so that it can be shared because you cannot share it from the Power BI desktop. It has to be published to Power BI service uh, for you to be able to create one dashboard and second to be able to share your reports and chart uh, with different users. Now on the right side, we have seen that there are different fields. Uh, just before that, we have these different visualizations that can be created and they have their various options based on the visualization you choose. There would be different options displayed over here and here you have the filters that can be applied. And let's go to home. If we go to the left hand side, uh, the, we have three different options over here as well. The first one, as it says, is report and this is where you can make your reports, which can then be used in dashboards in the Power BI service. So we'll take a look at how we can create reports. The second pane is going to be your data. So if you click on this in the data pane and select your financials, so it will just give you a preview of the data again. And it gives you some information at the bottom as well, which you can use uh, just to have an idea of what kind of data exists in your data source. So this second pane is basically all about data. And the third one is going to be your data model. Since we have only one table right now, it is showing us that one table. If there would have been multiple tables, then it would have shown those multiple tables. It would have also shown uh, the relationships between those multiple tables if it could detect them on its own. Otherwise, there's also an option to change the relationships. So that is uh, going to be a topic for the later sessions, which is going to be a part of the data modeling in Power BI. So let's go back to the visualization or the uh, report window for now. And now let's go and click on this drop down once again. So making a report or making a chart in uh, Power BI is really simple. So for example, let's say we want to analyze product uh, sales. So, I mean, you can even just drag and drop the column over here. So it will create some kind of visualization on its own. Now you can see that it has put in down some products and it's very small. So we can change uh, this and then we can change the font size and all also to make it better looking and easy to read. And then you, if you just put sales as well over here, then it will give you this figure for sales as well. So it has created a table kind of chart on its very own. So this is one thing that can be done uh, if we do not want it to be displayed that way. Now we have various options on this visualization pane. Very simple. Uh, we can just choose the options and a simple bar chart. So this is what it would be converted into. So it's very easy to convert it. Just select the kind of visualization you want and it will make it in that form. And if you just drag it down over here. You will be able to see the kind of visualization you have made. So it's, it's very simple. So you can either just drag and drop the columns you want and then choose the visualization. And another way is to just choose some visualizations. So, and this is going to be a pie chart. So just click on it. You do not even need to drag and drop. Just click on the visualization and it would be added to your report. So you have the pie chart over here. Now this is obviously empty because we need to add the data fields. Otherwise it does not make any sense. So here we have seen sales by product. Let's say here we want to see the, what do we have here? Uh, let's say we want to see the profit. So we have the profit. It's all 100% right now because we haven't defined any dimension for that. So uh, the dimension, let it be segment in this case. Okay. So now you can see that there are dif uh, different segments and based on that, your profit is being displayed. So for the government segment, you have this much profit and it has even calculated the percentage over here. 
for small business you have something 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 so you can just add the, these charts very easily to your report window and keep uh, adding those charts or create different pages of the reports this is page one just click on this plus button and create a page two and so on another very interesting and a uh, very powerful feature of power bi when creating all these charts over here is that these charts are interactive on their own uh, unless uh, and unlike some other tools you do not need to uh, set that interactivity uh, explicitly so let's say we have the sales by product and i just want to visualize the sales for this one particular product which is a velo product so i just go and select that particular product so when i go and highlight and select on that particular product you'll see that the other chart also uh, got selected for that particular product so whatever you are filtering this first chart on that same filter gets applied to the other charts on your report as well and now you can see the amount for that region particular highlighted portion of this first chart so let's come out of the window and now it works the same way with other charts as well so let's say uh, i'm going to select the garment segment which is the major segment so as soon as i select on the garment segment my sales by product also gets filtered on that particular segment so now i can take a look and i can see that for the highlighted portion these were my sales for this product so it gets filtered on whatever filter we applied on this particular other charts so this is basically known as the interactivity between the different charts and it is very and it is actually automatically uh, implemented in power bi so it's very easy to have uh, these uh, different charts interact with each other obviously we have the feature to customize and we if we do not want them to interact this way with each other we can take away this we can make some setting chains and we can disable this feature for some particular set of charts as well but most of the time we do want it this way on dashboard so it is very uh, useful that it is uh, automatically implemented by power bi now once you have created your report the next step would ideally be to simply go and publish it once you click on publish it automatically says that publish uh, this report online in the power bi service so you can just need to click on it uh, to publish it to the power bi service you would need to sign in to the power bi service that is also free so you can just create a free account in the power bi service and we can sign into the power bi service and upload this uh, report to the power bi service in the my workspaces area so that part we'll see in later videos uh, how we can use the power bi service and the various features of power bi service but all the design and development has to be done in power bi desktop and this is the whole flow that we are going to go through 